Well, we are really excited to have Julia with us today from SOS Inventory. Julia, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Julia. I am a sales rep and account executive from SOS Inventory. I've been with them for a couple of years now and happy to answer all your questions. So SOS is one of the companies that we partner with. As you know, we partner with inventory management software that connects to QuickBooks and we help small business owners find the right inventory management software. And we have partners that we partner with um, that do implementations of SOS. We currently don't implement SOS our, ourselves, but we partner with those who do. Um, we want to not only help you find the right inventory management software, but assure that you have a successful experience. So it's important to get an implementer on board uh, as well and then work together with uh, SOS support team um, to assure a, a successful implementation. So uh, SOS has been around for a long time, uh, haven't you? Uh, how, how long have you been around? SOS was formed in 2009, and it has been a web product the whole time. And I'm glad you mentioned that because it seems like more and more people are just saying, I want web, I want web. There are still a few stragglers out there that say, no, I want to own the license and I don't like the monthly recurring payment. But almost everyone is just uh, surrendering to the fact that we're online now. And um, no one's afraid of security or anything like that. It's just like, okay, we want the convenience of uh, uh, and the access, right? So, what what uh, what's your average size of customer? And maybe that's an unfair question because is there an average size? You know, maybe what's the range of customer? Maybe tell us a little bit about who's a good fit for SOS. Sure. So SOS is really designed for small to medium-sized businesses. So from mom and pops through sort of light, smaller manufacturers. That said, we do have some larger customers now. Um, pretty much anyone who's using QuickBooks Online and could use inventory assistance can use SOS. We don't have strict data limits or anything like that. So if you have inventory needs, chances are we may be a good fit for you. Yeah. Would it be an accurate statement to say your wholesale distribution, light manufacturing, and e-commerce software? Would that be a yes? That's a very good question? summary. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's that's how we categorize you for for sure is wholesale distribution, light manufacturing, and and e-commerce. So I'm glad we got it right. I'm glad we got it right. Um, so Julia uh, is going to show us. Uh, SOS inventory. Um, and usually the pattern that we follow is she'll create a, a sales order and then create a work order and then create a purchase order and then fulfill the purchase order, fulfill the work order and fulfill the sales order. And uh, with inventory software, if, you've, if you're new to inventory software, the sales order is the big thing, right? If you've just used accounting up until now, you're probably not used to the sales order. You've just dealt with estimates and invoices, but with inventory software, it's all about the sales order, right? Um, the sales order is a promise to deliver. An invoice is a demand for payment. An estimate is, um, well, an estimate. <laughs> it's, it's a quote, you know, it's, it's not a promise. Well, it's a promise to keep the price at that price. Uh, for a certain period of time. So, so anyways, um, first of all, Julia, why don't we start there? Show us all the different ways cells can funnel into your software. Um, so talk, talk to us about the, the cells capturing portion of your software. Sure, absolutely. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And so ultimately, you're going to end up with sales orders and SOS that appear in your sales menu in the sales orders area. And you can input those sales orders manually. If you're taking those orders via email or on the phone, you can bring them in from our e-commerce integrations directly. So that would be Shopify and Big Commerce. We also do have open API and EDI functionality. So if you have a programmer or an EDI provider, you can bring those in that way as well. Do you integrate with um, 
uh, what's it called? Zapier or Make? We do. We integrate with Zapier. So for those of you that are new to Zapier, um, it's a way to integrate um, one software program with another software program that have an API that uh, can, can it's kind of a build your own integration type of, of software. Um, so it's good to know if you're in the integration world and you're a small business owner wanting to integrate this software and connect this software, you know, Zapier and Make are a good thing to know about. All right. So do you want to see the sales order? Yeah, let's take a look. All right. So first thing to know about this program, using it in general, is you can always work off of the lists that you find in these operations menus on the left-hand side, or there's a quick add button up on the top on your toolbar. So if you want to quickly add a sales order, you can come into the sales section, hit sales order, and this is going to generate the sales order transaction for you. Your customers will sync back and forth from QuickBooks and they'll populate here. Select your customer. That's going to pull in their information. The available shipping addresses will be your locations, which you've set up within SOS, which would typically be physical locations. And then you have a table where you're going to put what this customer expects to receive and putting anything on a sales order in this program takes it out of your available quantity. So it will dedicate that inventory to the sale. So I'm gonna show you sort of a regular item another item that has units of measure attached. So for this one, your standard unit of measure is going to be in each, but perhaps I buy these by the dozen. You can toggle and your prices will change. And then let's do an assembly as well. And so I'm a flower shop. So this here is an assembly that we build. Maybe we'll add a few of these. Once this table is filled in, you can see you do have cost and markup columns that are available. Your customer is going to see your unit price and your amount only. And then down at the bottom, you have some available fields as well. You can record a deposit if they have paid a deposit. Um, you have order stages, you can move things through, you can assign these to different sales reps as well. All those kinds of nice features. Nice, customer PO, priority. Uh, does that priority flow through to the fulfillment screens? Is that where that uh, comes into play? Yeah, you can assign priorities to different transactions and they'll flow. And also they can be used to write automated order processing rules. So um, those are kind of little if-then rules you can write in this program to control uh, different notifications as well as different transaction flows. Wow, you just blew my mind. That's That's pretty cool. I had no idea SOS had... I could do that if then statements and an automated price processing that's that's powerful that's powerful stuff um, we might we might have to do another recording just focusing on that because <laughs> that that's a whole new world right there so uh, when you were at the top of the screen i really like this design by the way it's just very logical uh, just they're friendly um, you talked about the location in that top right hand corner where it says home shop. Um, location in this case, are you talking about a site or a building with an address? That type of typically, that's how you would use them. There are people who use them to represent conceptual locations as well, like in transit, quality control, things of that nature. Typically, on your sales transactions, especially, that would be the physical location you expect to fulfill out of. Right, right. So, uh, a user of SOS could have multiple warehouses across the country mm -hmm. and and you can triage those warehouses and decide which one's going to fulfill the order. Cool. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Now you mentioned um, SOS and big commerce and we talked about Zapier a little bit. Are there other ways you can pull uh, pull orders into SOS like uh, with marketplaces, Amazon, eBay, or with EDI through SPS Commerce or, or whatnot. Um, you're nodding your head. That's good. <laughs> we do have EDI functionality, first of all. Secondly, we do have a true bi-directional sync with QuickBooks Online, meaning if you can integrate a marketplace with QuickBooks Online, those sales 
whether they be sales receipts or invoices that arrive in QuickBooks Online can be pulled in or will be pulled into SOS. That's really the best thing about SOS as compared to competitors is we have a true bi-directional sync. If you generate an invoice in SOS, it flows into QuickBooks. If you edit it in QuickBooks, that edit comes back to SOS, et cetera, and vice versa. So if you can get any kind of marketplace attached to QBO, those sales can end up in SOS. You can use EDI to get SOS sales. And you also have direct integrations with Shopify and Big Com. And then any anything that QuickBooks integrates with, I see what you're saying. That's that's nice. Um, wow, that is, that is powerful. I got to wrap my head around that for a second. You're right, because the rest of the inventory management software programs out in the market, almost the rest of them, uh, do not have a bi-directional. They just take it over and push it over. Yeah. Does SOS integrate with QuickBooks Desktop? No, it's just okay. the online version. Just an online version, and that's okay. A lot of a lot of people don't care about that. And it, you know, when if you're going to move from QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise to QuickBooks Online, SOS would do all the functions uh, that Enterprise used to do. I would exactly. think so. Mm -hmm. You may not need QuickBooks Desktop if you're adding inventory software. Is is the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Well, should we uh, should we go to work orders? Take a look at work sure. orders? Okay. So once I've saved this sales order, you can generate work orders directly from sales orders if you would like. And those can be generated from these little drop-down menus called actions menus. And you use these all the time in SOS to move forward in workflows. You could generate a work order straight from here or you can generate a work order from scratch in the work orders area or using this plus button. In SOS, a work order is going to be sort of like a manufacturing sheet where you are saying what needs to be built, on what schedule you can provide instructions, things of that nature. And you, know, you can give it a due date, you can put instructions here, you can assign this to a customer, all those kinds of things you would expect from a work order. And then you can use your work order to generate the transactions that actually do cause inventory changes and record your manufacturing. So once your sales order is saved, or rather your work order, excuse me, once your work order is saved, it appears on this work orders list and you can see you can give it a priority, it can be assigned to an order, et cetera. And then if you come into the quick view of your work order, this gives you a summary of that work order as well as these produce buttons. Produce is the button that's going to generate the actual build that's going to record your manufacturing. So in this case, it's pulling in the bowl of materials for the item that I said needed to be built on that work order. And then when you record this build, if you save it, at that point, that's when the inputs go out of stock, the output goes into stock and a journal entry goes to QuickBooks to record that asset implication. Is it possible to have multiple outputs I know that's a rare a scenario, but I'm just curious. You actually can. That's a different transaction. So in SOS, you have both builds and processes. Builds are the one you just saw with the single output. Processes, rather than working from bills of materials, they work from templates, but they can have multiple outputs. So for big batch manufacturing, things of that nature, you may use processes, and you can track waste using processes as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, you made me think of a, a customer we have that makes uh, foam inserts for mattresses. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they have a big extruder and they push out two products. One, the product they use, and two, the waste that they need mm -hmm. to reuse. So it, it's kind of rare, but but yeah, I, I have another customer that bakes uh, pastries and uh, they they make the dough and then cut the trimmings and then they recycle the trimmings, put the trimmings back in the next batch. And so they need to, you know, reuse. And so the output is sometimes scrap that gets, gets reused. Um, cool. So what about multi-level work orders? Can you, can you speak to sub bombs and sub bombs of sub bombs? Um, yeah. So you can have multi-level you know, I, I, I said that uh, your light manufacturing, maybe you can prove me wrong. <laughs> how 
you know, what, what's the extent? How robust is your manufacturing? So I still would say that light manufacturing is probably the correct way to describe us because we don't have terribly robust materials planning capabilities. But in terms of being able to actually record manufacturing, we are fairly robust. You can have sub-assemblies on the bombs of higher level assemblies to as many levels as you need. Um, that said, there will be some sort of manual process involved with tracking that. So if I needed to build a couple sub-assemblies to build assembly, I could put all of that onto a single work order. So for example, if I need two of these sub-assemblies and two of these sub-assemblies to build this finished card display, if I could record all of that. I could give them different view dates, different instructions, all those kinds of things, and then manufacture from that quick view with multiple produce buttons. Ultimately, there is some sort of manual need to manage these. If you develop a work order from a sales order, it's not going to understand if you need sub-assemblies to be upfront. And you bring up a good point. If you develop a work order from a sales order, that, that was going to be my next question. So you showed us how to just manually put it in. Mm -hmm. What kind of automation features do you have to help the user uh, leverage the, the data that's in the software to help them decide what what work orders to, to create. Um. Mm -hmm. So you can generate your work orders straight from your sales orders, from the action menu beside your sales orders. This is a good solution if typically you're selling single level bomb assemblies. If that's what's mostly on your sales orders, it's a really nice solution. You also do have some tools in your reporting section to help you decide. Um, in your sales, your open sales order report will tell you what you're waiting to build. Um, we have some production reports. So you can leverage this reporting, which is pretty robust. In terms of automation, like I said, not a tons, not a ton of automated material planning. Awesome. Okay. So the reports help us decide mainly um, what batches, because sales, you say there's a feature that uh, creates the work order from the sales order. Um, but if we want to batch it and aggregate demand, we go to the report and the reports tell us and help us decide uh, what exactly. to create. Um, on, on the topic of Bill's material and work orders and, and whatnot, I've got to bring up the topic of kits. Um, mm -hmm. So kits typically in my mind are something that doesn't require assembly or maybe mm -hmm. it from other perspective, you could say it's auto assembled or, or something like that, right? Or, or maybe you could call it a bundle. Um, what what do you have that's, that's kind of like that, like a kit or a bundle or an auto assembly? Mm -hmm. We have exactly that. In SOS, you have two types that you can give your finished goods that need a bill of materials. One is assembly. So that would be if you're a candle maker and you build a candle that you're actually going to take the wax, the wick and the fragrance out of stock and then stock your candle, that candle would be an assembly. If you sell three separate candles together at a special price, those three separate candles would be the bill of materials for your kit, but they will remain separate and available for sale until you ship that kit out. Cool, cool. Yeah, kits are a big deal these days. Um, and sometimes custom kits come up and boy, that's a curveball when it's coming from uh, Shopify and and mm -hmm. commerce, build your own kit and um, uh, things like that. I, I don't, does, does SOS help with that at all um, with uh, custom kits built online? Not, not very many people do. That's, that's um, a really, a really difficult one, but I just have someone fresh on my mind. And that's why I was wondering, had to ask. That's not really a capability that we have. If you were to have a kit on your marketplace and an SOS, they would need to already be matched skew to skew and have that bomb attached. So can't right. help there, I don't think. Right. So not not custom kits. I've, I I don't know who does do custom kits. That just seems to be a not new sure. thing coming out uh, recently. Um, okay. Well, cool. So uh, so you've got some reports to help us create work orders. Let's uh, should we go to purchasing and show us your, your purchasing tools. All right. So if you want to start with a purchase order, again, you can add it just quick from this quick add menu if you'd like. 
And there's not a lot of surprises here. Your vendors will populate at the top. These flow back and forth from QuickBooks Online. Uh, where you expect to receive this should be your shipping address, or you can drop ship to customers. And then you have this table where you will put what you're expecting from this vendor. So in this case, I'm going to show you again, just sort of a regular type item. Um, let's say we maybe buy these by the dozen again. And then I'll show you what a serial tracked or a lot tracked item looks like as well. These are called literally serial tracked and lot tracked in my system, just so I don't lose them. In reality, they would probably have an actual item name. Yeah, I hear you. And, <laughs> and then you can record expected tracking, shipping, all those kinds of things. Um, you have terms and you can also record a deposit if you've prepaid a deposit on this purchase order. I'm glad you're showing us this because um, I was just reminded a couple of days ago when I was looking at QuickBooks that you can't have lot number tracking and serial number tracking both turned on at the same time uh, in QuickBooks Desktop. And mm -hmm. of course, QuickBooks Online doesn't do serial number tracking or lot number tracking at all. Um, so yeah, thanks for showing us this. Um, that's important to, to point out that you do serial number tracking and lot number tracking. I imagine expiration date tracking. Is that same, safe to assume? Okay. Yep, you'll see that on receipt. Yeah. You mentioned something when you were creating this, that uh, this syncs back and forth from QuickBooks. Were you talking about just the vendor or were you talking about the whole purchase order? Both. Oh, wow. So, okay. So the purchase order entirely syncs back and forth. So you could... Yep. Create it in QBO or QBD, uh, excuse me, QBO, not QBD. Mm -hmm. You create it in QBO and it goes here or vice versa. So that's yep. hmm. awesome. Yep. What's and the, so you, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I just saw something on the screen that caught my attention. There's this little sure. box down there that says contract manufacturing, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I am interpreting as what I usually call outsource manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that feature? What does that do? Sure. You can mark purchase orders for contract manufacturing, and then that will dedicate that material to that contract manufacturing within the system. And then there's various ways that you can handle contract manufacturing, reporting it. Typically it is taking advantage of moving things between locations as well as, um, using builds to add service line charges and things of that nature, expenses to your build and absorb that into your ultimate manufacturing costs. Um, I don't honestly want to get too deep into contract manufacturing just because there's various ways to handle it, but that marks it as um, dedicated towards contract manufacturing for your bookkeeping purposes. Yeah. And that is, in all fairness, a complex workflow that could justify a whole separate uh, video. <laughs> recording um, outsourced manufacturing workflow can get pretty complex because mm -hmm. you know whether you send it out to them and they send it back or maybe you have your vendor drop ship it to them and when they're done they drop ship it to the next vendor and like all kinds of crazy things can happen with that right um, outsourced manufacturing so we can totally skip it for this video <laughs> totally fair um but uh yeah th that comes up all the time it seems like we help manufacturers all the time. And so that um, that caught my eye naturally. Um, automated tools. What, what tools do you have to help the user decide what to buy? So you showed us how to mm -hmm. create a manual purchase order. Can you show us what the use, what tools the user would use to ask the software what he or she should buy? Absolutely. So on an item level, you have a reorder point, max stock level, and lead time per item. And then in your reporting section, we have a reorder report that takes that information and will tell you what needs to be reordered in this purchasing section of the reports. Your reorder report uh, will run as of today's date. Every report has different filters, options, and columns, but if you run it just straight out of the box, it will show you everything that has hit its reorder point, as well as the level you want to get to and what you need to get to that level. And you can generate POs directly from here by checking these boxes and hitting generate POs. You also can add vendor as a column to this report and filter by vendor. And there's actually another tool as well. If you run this report, 
or schedule this report to run with the auto add to reorder list feature checked. That adds everything to the reorder list in your purchasing menu. So if you have separate reporting and ordering, you may have someone who runs the report, populates the reorder list, and then someone else comes into the reorder list, looks through it by vendor, and chooses what to order when. So a couple of different tools, but you can auto-generate POs based on reordering. So that's an area I totally geek out on, and I would really like to see that. Can you, mm -hmm. can you show us that, that feature? Yeah, let me actually go ahead and run this report with that auto-add to reorder list, just so I know there will be something there. Sure. And now if you go to the reorder list, I might still be thinking about that report. There we go. This is going to show you what needs to be ordered and you can check and batch generate POs. And this is currently just for my vendor who I call Brian, but you can change this filter by vendor, filter by all vendors. You have all these different tools for filtering. And then when you hit generate POs in the batch actions, those POs will appear on your purchase orders list. They're generated in the background. Okay. So um, can we can we look at that? Sure. Uh, yeah, let's let's look at that. So batch actions. Generate that PO from Brian as of today's date. And it should show up very quickly since it's just a couple items. Let's see. Maybe not. Quite. I like how interactive this feature is and how it shows you step by step, it lets you and walks you through step by step. There um, it is, generated by SOS inventory phase date. Yeah, so showing 24 purchase orders. And uh, if I, I'm guessing the purchase order number is 218 and 211, so we could actually click on that and it would take us mm -hmm. to the purchase screen that that shows us the purchase order we just created and then all that's left to do at this point is send it to the vendor right yeah yep very nice and all of those sort of next step tools in this program are always located in your actions menus so it's really as simple as getting your workflow started and then coming back to the action menu beside the stuff that you're working on and it will tell you your next step. So you can approve your purchase order. You can email it to your vendor. And then of course you can receive straight from here as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I guess that's the next step we want to look at. So, so you just showed us um, the creation of orders, creating a sales order, creating a work order, creating a purchase order. I guess we're ready to start um, fulfilling uh, uh, purchase orders. Do you, do you guys have, um, any sort of mobile uh, warehouse fulfillment tool that uh, that maybe you could show us or speak to? I don't really have the ability to show it, um, but I can tell you that we have an iOS app currently and an Android app in development. And those apps do have pretty much the full functionality of what I'm showing you on the web version. Anything that you can do on the web, you can do on the app. It might look a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same functionality. Um, I wish I had the ability to show it to you, but I really don't. Sorry. So let's just talk about it. That's okay if we if we can't see it. Um, maybe we can see it on a on another video another day. But um, so you you say just about everything you do on the web uh, platform you can do on the iOS app. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's huge. Um, and. I'm sure it's just a reconfiguration or redesign of the screen so they look better on mm -hmm. on the small screen. But I mean, we just created sales orders, created work orders, created purchase orders. And a lot of times the mobile apps don't get into the creation of orders. They just get into the fulfillment of orders. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why I didn't really mention it until now. Uh, so um receiving and, and picking what what kind of functions does it do with uh, uh order fulfillment does it do receiving and picking and packing and shipping um yeah so basically anything like i said you can do on the web you can do on there um one thing it does not do yet which people sometimes ask about is pick to or rather scan to pick you can use the ios app to use apple device cameras to scan barcodes and you can scan barcodes on two transactions, but so far we don't have a scan to pick function.
but there is the ability to compare barcodes using the app to make sure that you are looking at the correct product. Um, and then there's the ability to create and then fulfill all your transactions. Yeah, and the way users describe scan to pick uh, sometimes is misleading too. And I, I wonder if what you do have is what everyone else probably has too, where, uh, yeah, it, scan it and then hit tap the pick button sort of thing rather than scan, scan, scan. Um, both, in my opinion, are usually adequate for the small business owner. And, and the option to select instead of scan is probably sometimes... Um, uh, absolutely necessary. And uh, because if it's not working, you need to select something or maybe they don't have the barcodes printed out because implementing barcodes, what a lot of small business owners don't don't realize is that actually takes some work um, to make sure everything has a barcode. And so having the ability to select instead of scan uh, sometimes saves the day and makes makes it possible to use the mobile device. But it's it's good to hear that um, the mobile device is available. Uh, as you know, to to achieve accurate inventory, you need uh, to implement the policy of the person that touched it is the person that records it in mm -hmm. real time. Uh, and if that happens, then you're going to achieve accurate inventory, and then these automation tools that you showed us, the purchasing automation tool is going to work, is going to be reliable uh, because your inventory is accurate. So, well, let's let's take a look at the, um, just the web platform and show us the order fulfillment features on the web platform. So I'm going to go back to the purchase order we created originally because it has a couple features based on the items on it that I want to show you. So if you do go to, you see, first of all, on your purchase orders list, you'll see the status open in the received box empty if it has not been received upon at all. And then you can come in and if you hit receive, this is going to generate an item receipt and it's going to pull everything from the purchase order onto that item receipt. If you do need to partially receive, you can. You can delete lines, you can adjust quantities, anything on this receipt when it's saved is going to be what comes into stock. And then the purchase order will stay open if it has not been completely received. You can see that any serials or lots coming into the system, you would assign the serials here. Same with lot numbers. Um, they can be scanned or typed or even bulk uploaded for serials. And then for your lot number, you can see that you have the ability to assign an expiration date at this time, or you can always go back to your lots list and assign an expiration at a later date. Another thing that's important about your item receipt is this is the transaction that communicates with QuickBooks Online on your purchasing bookkeeping piece. And so if this payment field is left set to bill, that will generate a vendor bill based on this item receipt on the QuickBooks side. And what are the op other options for the payment? You say none, nothing will happen, of course. And then you can auto record cash check or credit card payments by assigning default accounts to those in your SOS settings. Oh, I see. So you can kind of skip the bill step and just go straight to creating a, a, a check, credit card or cash transaction. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, and I think usually um it would be bill so i see why it's defaulted to bill mm -hmm. yes uh, so when you receive it says um you also I, I also like the option of none so if you receive and the payment is none um then that what would that do would that create a journal entry in quickbooks just debiting inventory and crediting a holding account like a liability account or something um, so all of your inventory quantities are held in SOS. So it's going to bring your inventory quantity into SOS. If it says none, it doesn't communicate with QuickBooks at all. Um, so if you've prepaid and you already have a vendor bill over there or something like that, you might want to use that none option. Gotcha. If they've prepaid, um, 
they yeah how do, how does that work if the, you bring up a good point um if they prepay they do that in quickbooks or sos or does it matter because they both sync if you're going to record the payment on the quickbooks side for purchasing okay whether it's whether it's a prepay or paying afterwards uh the payment gets process rather and then you can record the deposit once it's been paid in sos and then that will not be Included, say you paid a 50% deposit, you could record that here, and then that would not be included on the vendor bill if you were to send the bill. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Prepayment uh, is is more and more popular these days, mm -hmm. right? Prepay and pay immediately. And um, okay. Nice. Nice. So, so if you just receive it, probably just leave it in SOS until it's ready to be billed, and then you process the bill and that flows through to QuickBooks. And you can do that on QuickBooks side or SOS side. Is that right? Receiving needs to happen in SOS. It will hold all of your inventory quantities, but purchase orders can be created or edited on either side. On the other side. And then the bill can be done on either side as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure I understand that right. Okay. Well, awesome. So, so that's the receiving process. And if you have the mobile device, the screen looks a little bit different, but accomplishes the same thing. Um, and then once the inventory is in there, we should be able to uh, start to use that inventory to um, uh, close out a work order. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the next step, we could use that inventory to close out sales orders or work orders. So what would you like to go to next? Work orders? All right, let's do that. Um, let me quickly give this a so we can actually close this. Does it say numbers being used? Oh, I didn't approve it. Well, there you go. You can see one of your fail safes working there. If this hasn't been approved, it's not going to allow anyone to receive upon it. Yeah, I actually just talked to a customer yesterday about purchase order approvals. That's a thing for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, so if we go back to our work orders, from the work order itself, again, if you look to your actions menu, it's going to give you your options of what you can do. One of the things you can do is create a pick ticket from your work order. That will generate a pick ticket with all of the items that need to be picked to complete those bills. And then that can go to whoever is doing the picking. And then when it's time to actually record the builds, record the actual manufacturing. That's when the quick view with the build buttons comes into play or the produce buttons. And these produce buttons will generate either the build or the process needed to build that final product. Hit produce, this generates the build. Um, you would select the lots and serials and all those kinds of things going in. And then once you save this, inputs come out of stock, output goes into stock and you can then fulfill your orders with that output. And I see down below there, it says used per and total in build. Is that mm -hmm. where you would put in the actual quantity used? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these can be edited. If this bill of materials isn't accurate for this particular build, you can edit items, you could edit the quantity that's going into them. And then your master bill of materials won't be affected, but this bill and your COGS, or rather this build, so the actual inventory implications and the COGS related to this final product will be affected. And I see right there on the bottom left, it says add lines, clear lines. You know, I, I talk to people all the time that say, well, can we substitute on the fly? Can we mm -hmm. um, add something or take away something? If we're out of something, can we use something else? So that I, I like seeing that flexibility. That's that's really nice. So you're a little more robust than you might think <laughs> as far as manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and close it out, shall we? All right, let's see. This right. is not actually going to allow me to close it because I don't have enough on hand to build. Let's see if I can build one. <laughs> Maybe. That's if I good. This That's slide. good. safe. There we go. You actually can make it so that the inventory alerts you if you are going to go um, negative, or you can make it not. If you want it to just trust you, it doesn't have to. Yeah. I just deleted everything that might give me trouble so we can keep moving. But so <laughs> when I save this, inputs come out of stock, output goes into stock. See, it's not going to let me go negative. Boop. Very nice. That's another good fail safe. Yeah. 
We don't like negative inventory. I, I don't. I think very few people like negative inventory, and I wonder about them. Those those that like it <laughs> wonder about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, fulfill sales order. Is that where we go next? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at your process for fulfilling sales orders. This is my favorite thing about SOS is this workflow. So when we put these items on our sales order, it took them out of our available quantity, but it didn't take anything out of stock. And then, so as always, for your next steps, you can go into your actions menu and you can see there's a lot of options here to make it easy to fulfill this order. You can purchase for this order. You can transfer materials to the correct location. You can create a work order. What needs to happen in order to make sure that your bookkeeping stays correct and your inventory stays correct are two transactions. The first is a shipment and shipping is the transaction in SOS that relieves inventory. So it's not tied to invoicing. And what that does is allows you to get your inventory out of your building and off your books, even if you're not ready to invoice your customer. And so you can ship 10 times and invoice 10 times, or you can ship 10 times and invoice once and your inventory and your inventory bookkeeping is going to stay accurate the whole time. Nice. And so if I create a shipment, it pulls everything from the sales order onto the shipment. Again, you can partially ship, you can delete lines, you can do whatever you need. You would select whatever lots or cereals are going out as well. And then when you save this, this inventory comes out of stock at the location showing on the shipment and a journal entry goes to QuickBooks to credit the asset and debit the cause accounts of these items. Perfect. Perfect. So you said something that, that um, piqued my curiosity. You said, you know, you could do tons of shipments and then one invoice. And you might've been talking about something else, but it reminded me of another project I did where um, they had a contract with a customer and they just shipped every day, every day. But then the customer just wanted one invoice a month. Um, didn't want an invoice for every single shipment. Is that mm -hmm. is is that kind of what you were alluding to? That that type of feature exists in your software? Sure. Yeah. So you can ship yeah. at whatever schedule you need to from a sales order, and you can invoice at whatever schedule, or you could create. 10 invoices from 10 different sales orders and then batch those invoices and send one invoice to that customer at the end of the month. So you have quite a bit of flexibility. We try to make it so that you can reflect your real life processes as closely as possible in yeah. this program. Yeah, that's that's definitely a real life process. I think a lot of people do that. I kind of cringe when I hear them doing that or they just mm -hmm. issue POs every day or they just fulfill sales orders every day, but then, okay, they don't want an invoice or a bill for every single PO or for every single SO. Um, but, but yeah, it's, if they want the software to, to meet what they do. Right. So they don't want to change their process to meet the software. They want to find software that meets their workflow and their process. So that's good to know. That's good to know. Those, there are a lot of people that do that, that uh, mm -hmm. just want one invoice for a group of sales orders instead of, each one. Okay. So <clears throat> you printed out a pick ticket. Um, and I like what you said, where when you, when you save the sales order at first, it took it out of availability, but it didn't take it out mm -hmm. of stock. <clears throat> but then when you pick it and ship it, that's when it takes it out of stock. So anything else you want to show us uh, along the lines of picking and, and packing and shipping? Uh, maybe not shipping yet, but as far as picking and packing. Sure. So this is actually your shipment that we just created. So saving that would take it fully out of inventory. Okay. But if you did want to pick previous to your shipping, again, you can do it straight from your sales order. You can do everything you need to do related to this order from this one hub in this drop down menu beside your sales order. So you could create a pick ticket from here. This generates a pick ticket of everything on that order without any customer information. Um, and also we'll show you what you have on hand at the location showing on that pick ticket. You can generate multiple pick tickets from different locations if you need to. You're really just always adjusting each of these transactions to reflect what's happening in reality. And then 
you can always generate the next step either back from your original transaction. So if I wanted to go back and ship from here, I could, or I could create the shipment directly from the pick ticket. So if I were to say, assign a pick ticket to somebody in my warehouse and they get a notification for it on their mobile app, they get the pick ticket, they pick it, and then they want to generate the shipment from that pick ticket, they can. So as long as you're moving forward in your workflow, you can kind of do things from where it makes sense for each user. So does SOS do location or I shouldn't say location, bin or shelf tracking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And and then the pick ticket, does it take them through the path of fewest footsteps through their warehouse? Does it do any sort of sort order of locations? Okay. We so they don't just need have to... that robust of a warehouse capability. And, and you know, it's not a deal breaker. A, a lot of these small business owners um, with uh, the warehouses that their their size, a lot of them organize their warehouse according to product groups and whatnot. And um, now that feature I just mentioned isn't isn't a big deal. Uh, I was just curious. I was just curious. Um, so so you've got pick tickets, and then you can fulfill the pick ticket using the mobile device, um, and that'll take us to packing. What carrier software does SOS integrate with? So you can pull your UPS account straight into SOS, and then you can generate UPS shipments from your shipment screen in your fulfillment menu. So in that case, you would come in and you would simply go to the shipment that you want to process using UPS and say ship via UPS, and that pulls up your UPS account. This works for US-based UPS accounts. Okay. For all other carriers, or if you have non-US UPS accounts, you can integrate with ShipStation. Okay. Does SOS have a Canadian version? We have customers in 60 countries and we integrate with all the QuickBooks versions, but there are a couple integrations that only work in the U.S. So UPS is one of those. Um, and then also we have actually a payment processing feature that can be added called SOS Pay. So you can collect money actively in SOS on your invoices or your sales orders or sales receipts. And as of right now, that's only available to U.S. customers, but we are working on expanding that. Okay. My mind is blown. 60, 60 countries. SOS is in 60 countries. How, how many um, users or customers do you have uh, across the world? At any given time, we have several thousand users. Gotcha. All, all over the world. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, basically anywhere that they use QuickBooks online, I would think. Does, mm -hmm. does SOS exactly. integrate with any other accounting software besides QuickBooks online? Just QuickBooks online as of right now. We were designed specifically to work with QuickBooks online to fill some of those gaps that you see between the desktop version and the online version. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> QuickBooks online is definitely the most popular uh, for mm -hmm. sure. So uh, UPS, uh, uh, FedEx, um, do, you, do you integrate with a ship station, um, Starship, a ship bow? I don't know. There's, there's tons of them. Um, Just ship station as of right now. Ship station. And, and that's probably fine. Um, <laughs> everyone integrates with ship station. So mm -hmm. uh, that's great. Uh, so if they... They can uh, fulfill the order in ShipStation, and then that will automatically fulfill the order in SOS, right? Okay. Well, um, I think the, the main thing we haven't seen too much of, we've seen a little bit of it, is uh, reports and, and custom reports. Maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, the printouts, like labels and templates and and reports um, and and how to edit them uh, from, from SOS. So before we touch reports, I actually want to touch on forms. So for every different type of transaction, so let's say in your sales menu, if you look at your invoices, that's okay. You're always going to be able to see the default form that comes with this transaction by looking at your quick view. And if you had your logo in there, it would be here all of these are downloadable, editable, and then you can re-upload them. So you can edit them in Word. And directly within this program even, 
in this form templates area, there's an example of each type of transaction with all of the available field codes. So you can download your invoice form, for example, see which field codes are available, put them where you want them and re-upload it. And then if you go to PDF or email, it's going to give you all of your options and you can choose which kind of invoice you're wanting to go out to this customer. And so that's really nice in terms of making forms look and act the way you want them to, especially if you need more than one option. And what program uh, does SOS use or provide for their users to edit uh, forms? You can do it in Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word. And I've used that before. I've edited forms in Microsoft Word before, and it's it's pretty intuitive. Like it, It's pretty easy, and they, they have merged fields and things like that. I was really surprised when I first uh, looked at the editing capabilities in, in Microsoft Word. So... Um, yeah, yeah, great, great platform there. Um, you want to show us uh, labels and reports? So for labels, kind of same deal as the forms. So for anything like maybe say your lots is a good example. If you PDF a lot, it's going to pull up the label that it would auto-generate. And you can always make these look how you want, but it's going to tell you what's in that lot, um, the lot description, where it came from. It automatically gets a barcode. If it had an expiration, you would have that. So again, all of these kinds of things are configurable within the system and then can be printed just directly from beside wherever the type of data you're trying to print is located. Um, you also can uh, generate barcodes or print barcodes from the system. We have templates for different kinds of barcodes. Um, another thing that's really cool about these kinds of issues is we have free customer training for all of our customers, for anybody in the company from the moment they start their subscription until they're done with SOS. And so if there's somebody in charge of editing your forms, we have a class about editing forms. Um, and that goes for basically any kind of issue you might run into in the system. And those are live classes, you know, taught by actual humans who can answer questions. Nice. We like actual humans. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they're our favorite and they're our favorite. Well, in in conclusion, um, you know, we, we looked at sales order creation, work order creation, purchase order creation, and and fulfillment and uh, receiving, picking, packing, shipping. So this is, you know, the full uh, gamut of um, of warehouse management. And uh we talked about different sizes of customers, different industries a little bit. I wonder if we should um, talk about that a little bit more. Who is a, a good fit um, for SOS inventory and, and what kind of customers you, you serve a lot of? Sure. So anybody who is doing wholesale distribution or any kind of distribution is a good fit. Um, so light machining type companies we tend to have a lot of to, you know, bringing in metal, turning it into something else and sending it out. Electronics companies, we have some food companies, um, really across industries, it's, there's no limit. Anybody who has QuickBooks Online and isn't meeting their inventory needs, but those inventory needs aren't terribly complicated. So if they need to add, say, barcoding or serial numbers or track multiple locations or, you know, simple assemblies, all of those kinds of needs we can meet. And as you saw, it's really a very intuitive program that people pick up really easily. So it's not a huge commitment in terms of relearning everything, you know? Yeah, and in, in my own business, I think of a couple of customers come to mind that I re referred to SOS or recommended SOS. One, uh, manufactured trailers, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, brought in raw steel and cut it up into pieces and welded it into a trailer frame. Um, and another one uh, upfitted, uh, I think it was um, campers. Like he, yeah, that's right. He installed and made regular campers better. Uh, so upfit cool. is the proper term. Um, and basically decked it out with better electronics and speakers and sound systems and stuff. <laughs> so really unique, really unique. There's, there's people all over there. And, and I like what you said where it's like, well, 
wholesale distribution. You know, it is not really an industry niche. And I just had to ask that question because I get that question asked all the time. Sure. And I find myself repeating myself that there's there's not really just an industry. It it really mm -hmm. is not um, targeted that way. It's if your wholesale distribution manufacturing e-commerce using QuickBooks Online, then SOS is a consideration. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in, right? Sure. Absolutely. So, well, wonderful. Please, please, please react to this video. Google your YouTube analytics looks at reactions. And, and so if you've watched this video this far, then uh, obviously you've got some sort of comment, something on your mind. Please comment. We'd love to hear what you think about this demonstration. Um, click like if you felt like this was informative. Love those likes. And to see more videos like this of all the different inventory management software programs for the small business owner that connects to QuickBooks, be sure to subscribe, um, subscribe, subscribe, and uh, reach out to us. Uh, if you want to see more of SOS inventory, um, you know, reach, reach out to us, reach out to Julia, reach out to me. Um, you know, if, if you've decided on SOS, then, you know, Julia is ready to go. Uh, you know, she'll sign you up. If, if you're not decided on SOS, give us a call and, and we'll help you um, analyze, uh, analyze your business, assess your business and your needs and come up with a list of required features and, um, and, and help you find the right one, whether it's SOS or, or another software, we're, we're agnostic. Uh, we we want to help you find the, the right software and get you fit into, into the right software. So Thank you so much, Julia, for uh, joining us today. Thank you for having me. Hopefully we can do this again. <laughs>